Alrighty folks, welcome to the EV lab on a nice uh, sunny Saturday morning. Uh, we've been doing some experimentations and uh, as I hope we can hear those injectors firing away in there and coil packs firing even though if we look down here the engine is stopped and that's because we have gone into the DME and fed it a false uh, crankshaft position sensor signal which has convinced it um, that the crankshaft is turning and it's therefore firing its fuel injectors, coil packs and adjusting all of the things that it would normally do even though the engine is stationary. Now you might ask why are we doing this? Well one of the most important aspects um, of an EV conversion is to be able to have the car as normal as possible and the biggest part of that is to convince its engine management system that the engine is in fact uh, still in there even if it will be winging its way towards the recycling center so in order to make that happen um, first thing we have to do is to get into the wiring harness to the DME which is an MS43 in this case and identify three signals and the three signals uh, are the crankshaft position and the position signals from the two Vanos uh, camshaft sensors so hopefully be able to see here now we have disconnected the uh, camshaft position sensors so that the ECU now ignores those signals and it's going to rely totally on the crankshaft uh, position sensor which we have also disconnected from the engine and are feeding a false signal into it from an Arduino. Now one thing before attempting this particular task that one has to be very conscious of is the fact that the fuel injectors are actually firing and the coil packs are firing and the engine is stationary. Now all it would take would be for one cylinder to have an, an intake valve in an open state and that fuel vapor is going to build up in the intake manifold and the spark plug is going to be firing so you guys can join the dots for that little uh, happening so in order to remove the possibility of, of the uh, blasting the intake manifold off the car back to the future style uh, what we need to do is to get into the fuse block and we get our handy little uh, fuse identification chart and we go in there and the one we're looking for is fuel pump and that is fuse number 22 and as I can hopefully show we have removed fuse number 20 oh there it goes okay we have removed fuse number 22 now you need you would need to ideally do that when the the engine is running so that it depressurizes the fuel si system and then give it a crank at the starter for a couple of seconds to completely get out any traces of uh, fuel pressure out of the system now the next thing then it would be a good plan to do especially if you've got a crappy starting battery in here similar to what I have is uh, I was doing some tests and all of a sudden I started to get all kinds of strange readings and the dash died and all that well it turned out the ba the battery had fallen to about six vo volts so I got my 
big 30 amp power supply on there and that's pumping amps into it now and uh, keeping system voltage where it needs to be so let's get in here and have a look see what we're doing so what do we got what do we got what are we doing what do we got so first thing is um, put the lights on actually be able to see a little bit better hopefully you can see there now we've got an idle speed on the uh, tackle obviously the car is stationary so we're not going anywhere um, we have alternator and oil pressure warning lights on here um, got the normal dash display and we've got a handbrake warning here but no other lights we don't even have a mill light on on here so what we've also got is we've got our obd cable plugged in and we've got our laptop uh set up Turn the lights on so on our laptop uh we've got the free version again of bmw scanner uh version 1.4 and we're set up to read live data from the ECU and uh, I'll just get a bit of a zoom on that for you there guys I am going to buy a decent camcorder trust me uh, yeah there we go so hopefully see there we have idle speed about 750 odd rpm it's doing spark advance injector pulse durations all the usual stuff um, it even thinks that the signals it's getting from the cam is fine. Battery voltage is being held up with the power supply. Coolant temperature and that it's not exactly happy with because they're too too cold. But won't be too worried about that. Um, so that's all happy days. Now over here uh, we have an Arduino Uno, uh, which I did a very quick and dirty piece of software uh, for which simulates the 60 mi minus 2 um, tooth signal uh, from the crank sensor and it's now feeding that through a ridiculously long wire there it's crazy but it still seems to be doing it and it's feeding that straight into the ECU Oh, more of my focusing issues. I have a little pot on there that just uh, reads into an A to D converter, which just creates a reference uh, signal in the, the code, which I can use to uh, rev up the engine. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, so to throttle up the signal so that the, the, the ECU thinks that the engine is doing more RPMs than it actually is. So, um, so when a, another gentleman on U YouTube uh, goes under the name of Dr. Electric Convert that is doing a, a very similar series of videos um, on uh, BM BMW X5 which has the same MS43 DME um, and he was having some problems with actually getting the uh, ECU to recognize the, si the signal uh, that he was sending to it, particularly at startup. Now, I thought I would have a similar problem here today, but we're just going to go through the setup. Now, I've got a 750, 780 according to the uh, live data here on the um, RPM so what I'm going to do if we go to our dash again we can see there are in our belts there um, now I'm going to try and do is to just see if I can just even roughly wedge my camcorder in here um, so I have no power steering now which is wonderful oh my god this thing's a land yacht come on get a bit of right rudder in here there we are. Okay, so um, if I can just roughly even balance the camera in here, even hold it like so. Um, must be a better way of doing this. Not exactly Hollywood, is it? 
Alright, so if I uh, if I turn off my Arduino signal here. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, panic, panic, we're live, we're live. Yeah, okay, this is not working. Oh, we got all kinds of indi indicators going on and everything here, so. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to do this one-handed, which is gonna be fun. So, there's our signal. We're getting a happy takeover. So if I can unplug the Arduino, to work the USB lead out single-handedly. There we go. Okay, now, so that's my signal gone. Um, I get a mill light, and obviously all of the injector pulses and stuff stop. Now, if I turn my key off, obviously the dash dies, which is what it's supposed to do. Now, the Arduino is set to that, to that, that idle speed, that's 750 RPM. So if I come along and I turn my key on, so I'm just in an ignition on condition. And if I can now single handedly, so I've got uh, a mill light, alternator, oil pressure, uh, handbrake, and the service indica indicator. So if I can now get my Arduino back in and try to maintain the uh, camera on here. There we go. Just comes straight up and the mill light goes out. So that's uh, definitely somewhat different um, to the X5 case in that it needed to uh, have the engine turn over slowly. Um, as in, if, uh, as in, as in, if it was being cranked um, before it would, it would actually accept the signal. So, somewhat interesting. So that's what we've been doing today, folks. Uh, I've got loads more updates. We got to talk about batteries, battery boxes that I've had made. Um, got lots of things to talk about, but. Um, Literally just wanted to see first of all today if we could actually get the car to recognize the signal. Now, one issue that I do have, I'm just gonna uh, mess with the laptop here for a second. I think it's just my crappy code. Um, while the ECU is accepting the uh, crank signal because it, it it clearly is um, it's giving me so I've got an error list here which I'll try and try and run through so, okay, so, so air mass uh, obviously it's not happy with inlet camshaft it's not happy with exhaust camshaft it's not happy with but this one uh, segment timing true running disturbed crankshaft tooth fault would tell me that my code isn't exactly perfect for the missing um, segments on the crank sensor but it's good enough for government work so I'm gonna have a look at the code now and see what I can do to try to get rid of that now got all kinds of other errors there but that's not a problem so those are our four main DTCs there um, so obviously that's the one I want to try to get rid of uh, but apart from that my land yacht uh, thinks that it's it's actually running um, so I'm gonna do and try and do now and I kind of this is another one of these three-handed things um, what I'm going to do is go back to live data on the laptop. Uh, DME. Uh, live data. Try and get the full version of this program. Okay, so uh, live data. Uh, group 2. Okay, there we go. So now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to twiddle the potentiometer. And give her a little bit of throttle at the same time. Let's give her some revs here, guys. Oh yeah, let's put her into red. That's definitely what I'm talking about. Give her socks. Now, I think that's as high as my Arduino can actually go at the minute. Um, you can hear the coils and the injectors firing away busily in there. And let her back. Oh. She kind of goes into a little bit of an overrun uh, condition there. Just try and settle her at a thousand RPM. It's a little bit over a thousand RPM, it's about 1100 according to the computer. Which is close enough here. And uh, we might as well just have a quick look at the uh, signal on the scope. Just while we're at it for completeness sake. Nice fast idle going on there, and I don't know how well this is going to come out either. I'm going to have to prioritise this camcorder purchase, unless anyone particularly would like to donate one to me, that would be most appreciated. Um, so there's our signal. A little bit noisy, yeah, probably because of those long leads on there. Maybe that's what's even causing that error. Uh, it's a good bit of undershoot and overshoot on the waveform there. So that might be just, I might just put the Arduino beside the uh, ECU and actually try that. So we'll give that a try and um, see what we get out of that. But like I said, we've got lots to talk about in the next couple of videos. Um, we've got uh, brake pumps, power steering pumps, uh, drive shafts, all kinds of stuff going on. So. Uh, power, uh, should I say, air conditioning even we have to talk about, so we're getting started and as we can see here from this it's not really massively difficult uh, so far to make this um, uh, car think that it's got a running engine in it. Now, it'll be a little bit more difficult for an automatic but uh, that'll be for the next project. Okay folks, stay cool and we'll be back soon.